Rob Canute, and on this episode of the Cat Chaos Chronicles, we're going to see if we can take two engines and make one out of it. Lots of parts. Dang it. Well, here's the big issue with this engine, and it might actually be a deal breaker. Uh, this head, I worked for three hours to get it back in position. The problem being that, as you can see on this head right here, it came in the door with the heads already pulled up part way. The client given this to a shop, a pretty good shop apparently, according to what he said, it was recommended to him by a large retailer of Jaguar parts in the Midwest. And uh, they tried to pull the heads off and they kind of muffed it. And you can see here what the situation is. If you look at the video that I did last year on pulling heads, you can see that you got a, that gap there and you've got that gap there and it's also the same thing although not as bad from one side to the other now if you remember oh man look at this wow i don't know what they were thinking there Probably hit it with a hammer or something, trying to get it back on. But the problem is that if you get these things, if they start coming off at an angle or uneven, they get jammed on like you wouldn't believe. It's hard enough to get some of them off when you do it right. And there's a danger zone. You can see right here that you got plenty of thread left here. So if you wanted to pull it back down again, you could. On this end here, nothing. So, what I got to try to do is get this head back on without being able to use the cylinder head studs. So what I've done is I bolted this piece of aluminum billet on in place of a couple of the cam box studs. And I'm going to run a bar clamp from there down to the engine stand plate and see if I can pull it back on. If I can't get this thing down with that clamp, the client provided me with an extra motor for extra parts. That might be the one we rebuild if we can't get this head off. See what we can do. I'm going to call it quits on this engine. I've already got three hours in it. And uh, even if I could get these heads back down again, on this side, I found that whatever puller they used damaged the ends of the studs. So I'd have to either chase those threads, maybe even have to replace a few of them. Uh, the ones on the outside were okay, but the ones on the inside were a problem. So I don't know what the problem or what the outcome would be there. Plus the fact, I mean, I, I'm tearing out my clamp. And like I said, I've got about three hours in this right now that uh, I'm just gonna have to, just gonna have to pack it in. Cause I've got another engine. Now, the thing is, I don't know if that one's any better than this, but uh, another thing about this engine is that the crankshaft has a problem. The harmonic dampener was loose and it uh, chattered a, a ridge right here and um, that would have to be repaired so at this point i really don't need to take this engine apart any further sometimes in the future i may take a sawzall and cut the studs so that i can get some heads out of it and some liners 
and some rods, but don't have time for it right now. Okay, this is engine number two. As you can see, I've got the pullers in place here and uh, I got all the nuts off and I'm getting ready to start pulling this head. And if you look at this one, this one actually looks like it's, it's a real mess. Uh, if you were to judge a book by its cover, you can see grease and dirt. This thing's been leaking from, from everywhere. And uh, well, that's, it's never good to leak. If we look down here, we can see that the oil in the crankcase, all the grime down here, it's real loose. I mean, it hasn't been baked on. Now, it's my opinion <clears throat> that if I take an engine apart and I find that the bearings are really, really bad and the pistons are way out of specification, that this stuff has been baked on really, really hard from all the heat that's being created down here uh, by the oil. If the bearings start to get worn, I mean, there's a lot of bearings in here. The, the main journals are the size of a 460 cubic inch Ford engine. And uh, the rods are just about the same. Plus there's 50% more of them. So that's just, you know, that's huge friction. And if uh, it's the bearings start to wear, it doesn't take much for uh, the bypass to close and make sure that there's an adequate volume of oil at the crankshaft. But what that does is it uh, reduces the amount of oil that goes through the bypass to the cooler back to the pump. And that's when this oil inside here starts to get screaming hot. But, you know, if it's just kind of loose on here, that's kind of good news. Now, as you disassemble these engines, there's a lot of things that you can find where, for example, right here, this is a, an example of somebody taking an impact, attempting to knock the bolts off of the motor mount. You can see that we've snapped them off because they're seized in here. You can see there's a lot of corrosion built up. Good news is we've got enough thread on here where we could tighten a nut on each one of those and weld them in and then heat around here with a torch to expand this. And then there's all, there's a really good chance that we'll be able to get these things out with a whole lot of trouble. But, uh, you know, I'm not a real big fan of using impacts when you are disassembling an engine um, on stuff like this, the obvious things that are gonna be a problem. Actually, it's not that bad on this particular engine as far as mechanics brutalizing it to any great degree. So let's go ahead and, uh, and get this head off. By the way, you notice that uh, you've got a couple of pullers here that, that we market on the website. And there's a big controversy as to what works better. These are the big plate that goes from end to end. And uh, the big plate would have bolts that would push down on every one of the cylinder head studs. And I used to have one of those until I lent it to somebody who never returned it. And so instead of building a new plate, I built these, which you can find the plans for in a number of places. And I found that, you know, when you've got the big plate, if you tighten the bolts down at this end, nothing's making contact here except the one on the other end that you're levering against. And so you tighten all these, these up and then you go down here and then you tighten that up and then none of these are touching except for the ones up here. And it just seems to me, and that's a real recipe for getting these heads coming off in a crooked manner, getting them wedged up. And so I found that if you can use just two of these, that's probably the best way to keep everything even. Uh, you may find that you're going to have to have four of them. And if you go to the video that I did on cylinder head removal last season, I'll publish a link here uh, in the description for that particular video. You'll see that I had to use four of these. Plus, I had to rig up sort of a jacking arrangement up front here. Uh, I think uh, if you're entertaining thoughts of doing your own engine, that'd be a great video to watch. In fact, if you go to season one, 
And if you look at the series that we did on the Tuesday extras called the $100 V12 Overhaul Challenge, uh, you'll learn pretty much all that you need to know to rebuild one of these things. So anyway, let's go ahead and pull this off. got both the heads off and things are looking really good. First of all, you notice in the video that I used four pullers. Fact is I got four of them in the, in the box. I just put them on. The two end ones were really all I needed to, to do the job. The rest of them, I was just kind of spinning the bolts down and that's it. So it came off really easily. And despite the grungy appearance of these things are really in pretty good shape. If you look at the uh, combustion chambers, they're all roughly the same color. You can see that we do have some surface corrosion here. Uh, it's usually worse right in the middle, which it is in this case, but I think 10 thousandths, eh, there's some pits that may be a little bit deeper, but I think 10 thousandths of an inch is gonna go a long way uh, when we plane this to get rid of those. And even if there are some left over, it's not a big problem. So I think what we got here is a reasonably good pair of heads. So let's see what the pistons and liners look like. I've got all the liners and pistons out of that second engine. The news isn't that good. What we got here is the worst case scenario on the liners. The rest of them do exhibit this to some degree. Now, it's my understanding that this engine was stored without the, uh, the pan and the sandwich plate on the crankcase for a time, and that looks like where this might have happened. And I think that's going to be, those pits are going to be deep enough where that cylinder isn't usable. Piston, the rings were jammed in the grooves really, really tightly, and this is going to take a long time in order to get those grooves cleaned up. Plus the fact, I don't know if you can see it, but there's a fair amount of scuffing on the skirt of the piston. And the bottom line here is that this stuff, well, it probably could be made usable. I'm gonna have enough time and effort in cleaning all this stuff and refurbing it that we'd be over halfway to the cost of a new set of pistons and resized liners. Now, if you remember, we've got the first engine that we could probably take the heads and jack them up high enough where I could cut the heads off and pull the liners and pistons out of that one, but I've got no guarantee that after four or five hours of work that those are gonna be any more usable than these. So, Gonna call up my piston supplier, get an estimate on uh, actually three sets of pistons because it looks like the other owner is gonna need a set as well. And I wanna keep a set on the shelf so that I can shorten my turnaround time as much as possible on a single engine. So here's the tale of two engines. This is the first one we took apart in the first episode. And this is the one that we're gonna be building up out of two engines that we covered during the last episode and this one. In the case of both engines, the crankshafts are, re are usable, except they're going to need to be reground. They're just too far out toward the service limits to, to put it back together again the way they are. The cylinder heads look great in both cases. I don't look forward to any problems up there. Problem arises when we're starting to talk about pistons and liners. In this engine right here, the liners, as I showed you just a little bit ago, uh, exhibit a pretty fair degree of rusting and pitting, and uh, we're gonna have to resize those. 
The pistons were scuffed pretty badly and uh, and worn to the point where we really need to put uh, we really need to to get a new set of pistons. The situation right here, the liners are usable in terms of being within limits, but the pistons are worn outside of limits. So what we're going to do in both cases here is we're going to resize the liners 10,000. It's oversized and order up a set of new pistons if the clients are on board with that. So, you know, these, these engines are 30, 40 years old and it's not like you can go down to the auto parts store and buy a set of pistons like you can for a small block Chevy. So, that's the way it is. So if you like these videos, like, subscribe, and you know that Facebook thing I keep talking about and keep threatening that I'm going to get up and running? Well, it's up and running, but you know, I really am not going to have the time to deal with that. It's just too busy around here. It's all I can do to put one video together every week. So when you hear me say that, ignore it. It ain't going to happen. So we'll see you the next time on the Camp Chaos Chronicles.